Do we see this also in the New Testament? Talk to me about that. Yeah, so there is some carryover in terms of the value that making sure that money isn't your master is, right? And Jesus talks extensively about it. In fact, money is one of the things that he talks about most, right? Uh, the connection between what you do and who you are mm -hmm. becoming is more tightly related to worship in terms of, you know, Jesus talking about no man can have two masters, right? So if you love one, you hate the other. If you serve yeah. one, you can't serve the other. And so yeah. money is a beautiful stand-in for that because if we're always chasing money, then we can't actually be chasing Christ. And oftentimes the pragmatic outworking of that that we'll see is like, we uh, do it under the guise of chasing stability mm -hmm. or chasing, you know, just till I get enough to buy a house or just till I get enough to buy a car, then I'll start tithing and I'll start caring and blah, blah, blah. Right. And you've already lost, like you were saying, like you're chasing wealth, right? Like, like the writer in Ecclesiastes says. And so you've already, you're already bankrupt, you know, in that kind of situation. Uh, but the idea here is it kind of changes, right? So in the New Testament, the commands for money uh, aren't written on tablets anymore in the same way, uh, but in the spirit that indwells you and me as a believer now. So we believe as Christians that the Holy Spirit, you know, lives within us and helps us understand what the right thing to do is and how uh, the right way we are uh, in terms of supposed to be, um, how we're supposed to behave. And so we see that uh, in Malachi, like you said, that it indicts the Israelites for failing to tithe. But now Jesus in the New Testament is going to take it far more personal, right? He's going indict to the, indict the Pharisees for this hollow tithing. Mm. And so uh, you'll see that, you know, without uh, fulfilling the ritual, without applying the principles to other people. And okay. so uh, in Mark 7, you see this a lot, this idea of like being aware. Um, Jesus says, be weary of the Pharisees and their leaven, right? Because it, you know, a little bit of it can ruin the whole batch. And the idea here is like, if you're not uh, really, really careful in the way that you approach your relationship to money, there, mm -hmm. it's going to transform you instead of you being transformed by the act of giving. Mm -hmm. there. And, and it's a lot more of a difficult road to hoe, as it were, because there's less of this like spelled out thing that we see in the New Testament because Jesus mm. himself, that so tithing, okay. giving 10%, yeah. hear me, everyone, tithing, <laughs> giving 10% is not a New Testament concept. It's not something that's affirmed in the New Testament. It's not there. Jesus actually challenges you to go above and beyond, right? Okay. You're supposed to give more of the self. So let me get this straight. In the Old Testament, you have the specific Mosaic Covenant, which actually stipulates pretty specifically for their context what these regulations are right. and what these money laws are. Okay. Now, in the New Testament, the law or the divine instruction mm -hmm. is no longer spelled out on tablets, right. right? But now it's actually wielded through a person, Correct. which is the Holy Spirit, who now indwells us. So Correct. now let me ask you this. The law goes away but the Holy Spirit now internalizes in, in us. So does that make us more accountable or less accountable? Far more, because what we begin to see is that, that paradox is crazy. Yeah, because every time Jesus talks about the law in the Gospels, he either fulfills it or he intensifies it, right? right? And so when he brings it about, when he brings Old Testament law into the New Testament, kind of reaffirms it, you know, in that way, instead of just fulfilling it, and so it's no longer applicable in the same way. The idea is he's raising the bar on what it means to actually Th that's be a exactly follower right. of God. Exactly. And so the idea that when we begin to think of tithing or we begin to begin to think of our relationship to money is it becomes one aspect of the self that we deal with, right? One of the things that you'll hear preachers use a lot is this idea in terms of dividing the self into time, talent, and treasure. Mm -hmm. So where you put your time, where you put your energy efforts, things that you've been blessed with, right? Things you know how to do, and then where you put your treasure or mm -hmm. your money there, right? Yeah. So Jesus says where your money is, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also in Matthew 6. So the idea here is like, what you focus the self on, mm -hmm. right, is going to be the thing that really has mastership and ownership over you, right? And yep. so we see there's a couple of points that are worth examining here in a little bit of detail. Luke 19, so Zacchaeus, right, you guys know, if you, maybe you've heard the ch children's story, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He's like, trying to see Jesus teach on the road. He can't yeah. find him, so he climbs a tree. He's a tax there. collector, by right. the way. Hated by everybody, yeah. because as a Jew, you were under Roman occupation, you didn't like the Romans, and then you didn't like the Jewish people who worked for the Romans Correct. either. They were doubly bad. They were bad on all fronts. So as one of these people, he's outcast by pretty much everyone because the Romans probably didn't really care about him. As long as they got their money, he was good. Correct. So Zacchaeus would cheat people out of their cash. Yeah, he would his say, own people. Yeah. So say the Romans wanted a dollar. Zacchaeus would say, well, the tax is actually $5, right? And then he'd give his dollar to the Romans, and then he would keep four for himself. Yeah. So when Jesus comes through and says, hey, Zacchaeus, like, I'm coming to your house to eat with you today, Zacchaeus repents, essentially, right? And he returns four times anything he stole, and then immediately he gives half of his possessions to the poor. And Jesus' initial response there, salvation has entered this house today. Now, isn't it insane that when Zacchaeus 
is sitting across the table from God himself. Right. Yeah. In a way where... Also terrifying, by the way. <laughs> right. So he sees God for who he actually is, yeah. which means that he then sees himself for who he actually is. Right. Repents, mm-hmm. comes to faith. And the very first thing that is transformed or the byproduct of a transformed heart is how he sees wealth. Yeah. That is absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, because when you, again, like what you're saying, when you encounter the transformative Christ there, nothing else, it's like the man who sold everything he had for the treasure in the field, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like nothing else is worth as much as what that relational experience is. Uh, Now, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 15, Paul is not uh, only talking about giving, right, that we should do it, but that we should be giving out of just gratitude and not compulsion, right? But he's also making the connection here to worship and giving, right? Other people are going to know God because of our generosity. Mm. And this is one of the things I hear by people who are impressed the most, right? Uh, a couple of churches in the area I am uh, familiar with were a part of, you know, with everything in the coronavirus pandemic, yeah. like teamed up and helped raise almost three quarters of a million dollars Jeez. for just people in the community, wow. and people in need. And it was an amazing thing to see. And people were genuinely affected. Like the story got picked up by the LA Times, right? Wow. A lot of newspaper stuff isn't genuinely friendly to like Christian stuff happening yeah. today. But when you see generosity, it's transformative. Absolutely. And people care about it. Right. Because it's not just giving of stuff. It's giving of the self. Yeah. Yeah. And that is what God does. Because it's the biggest sacrifice. Truly. Exactly. Yeah. God and gives of himself. Now we see a, a negative archetypal example, right? Which is a fancy way of saying like a story that's not a good thing to emulate. Right. In Acts 5, uh, God kills Ananias and Sapphira for lying uh, about, you know, what they were giving to the church. And Peter talks about them. He's like, hey, look, you weren't required Mm -hmm. to give this stuff, but you decided to. So what's the point of lying, right? So it's like this fake transformation. Really, uh, it's a condemnation of hypocrisy. Right. Uh, But, you know, that's a pretty intense way to prove your point, God. (laughs) Right. (laughs) The idea of striking people down. And then obviously the, you know, the big one, 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money is the root of all evil. Correct. Correct. Good. So I feel really good about that foundation. I don't because it's an incredibly difficult standard to live up to. (laughs) For sure. 